even if there's one real positive from tonight, it was you in the, the face-off circle, um, especially that one that with under 30 seconds to go. Uh, what is that adjustment having to go back to doing face-offs this year been like for you? Yeah, it's uh, not something I thought I'd be doing at the beginning of the year. And the first couple of games, I've been texting Max Adler, seeing if he's uh, <laughs> been been taking his reps. But you know what? He's actually helped me out a bit. He's given me some pointers each game. And um, I know he watches the games and, and helps out. And obviously, the first two games, going against Nardella and, um, and Baptiste, two unbelievable face-off guys. And Jeremy Thompson's right up there in that category as well. But I felt a little bit more confident um, with him. And I, I thought going in, you know, try try to win some and kind of see what happens instead of you know just kind of conceding like I have been and, and trying to win loose balls and um, you know I was I was getting the clamp on the first couple so I thought why not go for it the the whole game and you know even if I'm not getting it I, I know he's not getting it out clean so um, try to just make it a 50-50 battle and I trust our ball team out there but um, it's it's definitely an adjustment get bending down and I'm getting a little old, older and been <laughs> been around a couple more years so um, getting up and chasing a ball around is it takes it takes a soul for sure, but I mean, whatever it takes for, for us to try and get wins. And um, if I'm on the floor contributing in some way, then um, I'm happy. So, another high point for you guys tonight was the man advantage and disadvantage situations. They only went one for four on the power play against you guys, and you guys go four for five on your man advantage situations. Just kind of talk about that special teams area for you. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things we stress that in transition, um, our opportunities to score goals. And obviously on, on man downs, you know, those are momentum swings when we can keep them um, off the board when they're on the power play. And um, I, I don't remember exactly what quarter it was, but when they went on that five on three and we were able to kill that off, kind of felt like we, we kind of turned the momentum a little bit there and, and it was running for us a bit. Um, so those are definitely areas we focus on. And I mean, that's a really talented offense. I mean, anyone can put the ball in the net for them. So um, obviously we game planned and, you know, Lyle, Lyle's one of the best players, if not the best player in the world. So shaded to him a little bit more and tried to get the ball out of his stick and, you know, trust Vino back there and, and our system. So um, I didn't know those stats, but that, that's a positive uh, moving forward for us for sure. First 12 goals, Ian, you alternated. You either even or a goal behind, which I don't know how often that comes up. Obviously not too often. Is it emotionally just difficult? Just if you feel like you're – constantly coming back and they go ahead just that the whole ping pong sort of thing definitely yeah i mean it's pretty cliche but it's true when lacrosse is a game of runs so um you hope that you can obviously get longer runs in them and when it's just ping pong and back and forth like that you said it can get get a little frustrating um and you know that's where i kind of try and take pride with face-offs you know when we score trying to get the ball back and, and get our offensive ball and try to get them momentum or if they score you know getting the ball back and trying to kill their own momentum so um yeah it's definitely frustrating uh when, when we can't get a little run going but you know, I think we got one going in the third, and, and things kind of um, were going well. I think we were up two at that point, and um, obviously they came back. And like I said, they're a talented team, and um, credit to them for that. Ian, looking ahead to next week, just how big is that game? Put, you know, playing Colorado, trying to get back on track, all that stuff. When you look at the mammoth coming up next week. Yeah, it's, I think it, every game from here on out becomes more important. Um, obviously, we're going to learn from this one and, and uh, move forward on to Colorado and start you know, game planning and getting ready. And uh, it seems like we kind of got a bit of a rivalry with them going. And um, you know, maybe the league's kind of helped that with playing them twice this year again as well. But um, you know, at the end of the day, it's another game. And, and you've got to prepare for anyone. Um, you know, each team's obviously different. But um, just because it's Colorado, and we've seen them a couple times in the finals and seen them a lot. Um, there might be some familiarity, but teams change every year. And, um, you know, they've had guys in and out of their lineup. Like, I know Dylan Ward just got back. There were suspensions from their Georgia game, all that. So, um, you know, it's we're, we're going to have to scout them well. They're obviously a very good team. And um, I'm sure the atmosphere here will be really, really cool and really fun, um, especially with it being them. And two and two has got to sound a lot better than one on three. Yeah, hundred percent. Early this season. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, Pre said it in the locker room. You know, you kind of break up the seasons into to um, six games, and you know, we have two losses in our in our first six games. So, um, you know, we we don't want to anymore obviously the rest of the way but when you try to break it up in those sections and, and think of it that way um, you know you can kind of focus on the uh, immediate and the, the closer games so um, but definitely two and two would be a lot better for sure awesome thank you, thank you.